to kiss the earth with hope and grace. Christian Church second service. Oh, I tell you, there aren't as many first service, but they're a lot louder than y'all. Good, Good morning. That's more like it. Golly. Um, some sad news, but it's kind of good news and, and what have you. We had a gentleman that went to our church here for a very long time and, and found the Lord here, and, and it's uh, Tom DeHane. He was the gentleman that was in a wheelchair and had one leg amputated, and he suffered a long time, and he passed away this week. So, you will see Tom again. You know, he found the Lord in this very building, and, and his, or the Lord found him, depending on how you want to look at it. But we will see him again. So, And there are no services planned. So that's sad, but it's happy, too. He's not suffering anymore. Uh, the ladies' luncheon on Tuesday this week will be canceled because of the everything going on. So if you're going to be here, you'll be alone. But if you bring your food on Wednesday, there'll be guys here helping out. Um, Howard and Linda's grandson, Parker, a uh, 10-month-old that's been suffering from seizures, just horrible seizures and stuff like that. It's been on the prayer list, <clears throat> and he's doing much, much better right now. And it's a praise for those of you that were praying for him. Thank you very much. They appreciate it an awful lot. I... The uh, sign-ups are still out there on the table for the one-year Bible. If uh, we're going to uh, go through the Bible, you are each one of you individually as uh, if you choose to join us the uh, there's two signups for one for uh, New King James and, and the others for uh, NIV there will be ten dollars and then what will happen is is they're divided the one-year Bible is divided up into four different sections so as you read it, it takes about 15 minutes maybe 20 minutes of a day and then as we read it through as a church it kind of what will happen is the Stan will be reading it through at the same time so if you sign up on the, your form in there for receiving an ask to be on his emailing list, you'll receive the demails, which will kind of give you updates on and confusing parts of the Bible and stuff like that, and give you an opportunity as you read through it every day to go, wait a minute, I don't quite understand what do they mean by that. Shoot him an email and he'll answer it and we'll all get the benefit of it because a lot of us will be asking the same question and not necessarily ask him. So if you're interested, please sign up out there. And then Stan wants to have a big pizza party at his expense at the end of next year to celebrate those of it had gone through it. Yes, my dear? Uh, when it come in? It'll be before New Year's. Okay. Let's get through Christmas. I don't know about you, but I'm broke. <laughs> uh, so they'll come in and, and um, at, after Christmas sometime, and we'll have them before New Year's. Anyways, it's, it's to my way of thinking, this is a Bible-based church. We, we live by the Bible. And 
this is an opportunity for us to all share in it together and going through it. It's not a guilt thing. And I've had people ask about this. Well, what happens if I don't read it on Tuesday and I'm a day behind then on Wednesday? You know, catch up when you can and where you can. If you miss a day or you miss four days because you're on a cruise ship somewhere, take me with you. Um, it's not a guilt thing, believe me. But it's an opportunity for us to be kind of all, all on the same page in that Bible. also gives us an opportunity to ask each other and discuss it with each other about questions that come up. So please keep that in mind if you'd like to, the sign-ups out there. Um, this Thursday, Wednesday, and Thursday, um, the church is going to be open between noon and about 8 p.m. <clears throat> if you have anything that you would like to drop off for the rummage sale for Friday and Saturday, please come by and do that. <clears throat> if you don't have anything to drop off, but you'd just like to come by and visit and help set stuff up and do whatever and just uh, help and just come by and visit, that's what it's all about. It's a relationship. We have a relationship here with each other, and it's a church family. Please just stop by anytime between news on Wednesday and th Wednesday and Thursday between noon and 8 p.m. And if you have stuff you want to drop off for the rummage sale, that's a good time to do it. If you need help, uh, talk to Ray. He's out there, and Ray will come by with his truck and pick everything up. Um, sign up for the Christmas dinner. Barbara is having a Christmas dinner here at the church. She's sponsoring it for people that have family that are out of the area. Um, if you have family out of the area or you just happen to be alone or you just want to come down here and have Christmas dinner with your church family, please do. The sign-up's out there and, and uh, Barbara's phone number's on the bulletin. Give her a call and, and uh, participate. It'd be kind of fun, you know. A lot of us, our families are all over the place, so it's kind of nice to have a place to go that's with loving family. Um, salvation sign-ups again. That's going to be the... Uh, next Saturday, not this coming Saturday, but the following Saturday. The sign-ups are out in front there. Um, that also is a good time. It's a good thing. It's a really good thing. It makes it so that, you know, we can go out there and we wear a little sign Joe has and it says, Salvation Army, Hope Christian Church, and you get out there and ring a bell. <clears throat> sign up with a friend. Bring a friend that doesn't even go to this church. It doesn't matter. And, you know, I've done it every year that Joe's been doing it, and it's, it's not what I expected. I kind of expected to be out there and be bored and people be sarcastic and grumpy and stuff like that. And that was not the case at all. Everybody was just delightful. So it was, if you feel like you'd like to do that, the sign-up's out there. We have kind of a blessing here. Joe's daughter, Lisa, had a fire this uh, week, Friday night. I guess she's out. Uh, her daughter smelled smoke and thought, hmm, that seems odd. And they went and looked, and it was an outside box electrical box and it was on fire and had she not smelled smoke they were just all getting ready to go to bed it could have been extremely bad so it's kind of a praise the good lord is watching after them and protecting them and that salvation army thing joe will also have a trailer park down there at safeway and provide coffee and a restroom facility and and donuts and cookies and all the stuff that's really bad for you and i'd like to thank carol and walter and all the other people that came down here on Saturday morning and decorated the church. I thank you very much. You guys are wonderful. Well, I thank all of you that participated. That, that's what this is about. It's a, it's a family. We're a relationship. Anyway, please take a moment here and ask Say hello to somebody you don't know. I know that there are some strangers here in the church that they don't know any of us. And ask them if they're going to read the one-year Bible.
Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, your perfect love is casting out fear. And even when I'm caught in the middle of the storms of this life, I won't turn back, I know you are near. And I won't be no See 
Today we continue our series, Celebrate, and we are focusing on the gift of life. This month, people all over the world will be celebrating the baby who became the savior to the world. In communion, we remember the price the savior paid to save us on the cross. He rose from the grave and he alone is worthy of our worship.
Hey, Hope Church, second service. Are you glad to be here today? Yeah. Amen. I welcome you. We uh, welcome everyone that's here also. We welcome, if you're watching by live feed on your uh, computer or your uh, iPhone or Droid or whatever you got, uh, we welcome you and we're glad that you're with us too. We're in a series called Celebrate and we're spending the month at a time that can be stressful for people, even with all the fun stuff that we're trying to have uh, and all the busyness, we want to celebrate the process. And I did this on purpose to uh, get us to think about celebrating about things that really matter as we go through the holidays. See, one of the challenges is we can get so busy with this right here, uh, we can miss out on the stuff that's right here. You know, a, a stinky uh, place of animals and manure doesn't seem to promise so much. But this really, Christ brings, the baby brings so much more than this. And so we're talking about gifts during the month. We've looked at the gift of Thanksgiving daily. We don't just get to thank God once a year and eat a bunch of food. We can have Thanksgiving daily is the way we opened up the series and be thankful, radically thankful, like a leper that's been healed, that one that came back to say thank you and praise God. We want to be like that and be thankful because spiritually we've been healed. And uh, then we talked about celebrating relationships last week and the fact that in the church, in the body of Christ, uh, even though we're all different, we're the same. We're fat, we're skinny, we're uh, attractive, we're working on the attractive, we're, we're all different uh, backgrounds, different life experience, and in a world that wants to segregate, get the old people over there, get the young people over there, get the different races, whatever, uh, in, in the kingdom of God, in the church, God loves our, our variety, our diversity. But he's the one that thought it up. So rather than having a conveyor belt of trying to make every disciple of Christ look exactly the way we think he ought to look, we say be who you are. If you don't be you, nobody's going to be you. But what's really cool is even though we're different, we're the same. We looked at that last week. In Christ, we're one in Christ. We're clothed in Christ. And when God looks at us, he doesn't see our flaws and imperfections. He sees Christ. And then we said about celebrating relationships that together we're making a difference in the world. It is so awesome to see the things going on here. The food that's going out uh, to the simple gesture that every week we ask people, if you can, just bring an extra can of food or an imperishable food item. And Gail is heading that up and making sure that that goes to people who are in need on the ridge. Isn't that awesome? And we have now foods being brought here. I don't know if you noticed the boxes. If there's anything left after, help yourself. We got here a little earlier this time, which was good because we, the first service people missed out last week. So uh, uh, Butch, who is the president of a uh, local chapter of the um, Vietnam Vets, has made it possible for us. He talked to Trader Joe's. Uh, they have food that's getting close to the date, and they start clearing it out. It's still good, though. Anybody sample any last week? It's still good. And uh, um, so if you need some food, if there's any left, help yourself. If you don't need any, but you see something and you know someone that needs food, feel free to take it and be a blessing to them. And we're making a difference in other ways. Rock the Ridge, different things that's going on. To, uh, singly, we can only do so much. But when we come together, when we come together, I'm looking out there at people that gave massages at uh, Rock the Ridge, the last one. Someone stood on her feet all day and cut hair and I could go on and on the list of things that I couldn't have done all those things, especially people don't want me to do uh, cut their hair. But uh, together, we each bring something. That's how God made it. He gifted us, and we're making a difference in the world. And the last thing we talked about was we leave this place at different times, but we will meet again. Amen. We will be with the Lord forever, and that's something to celebrate. And so no matter what's going on around the world and the circumstances, we can celebrate anyway because of what we have in Christ. And today we're going to look at celebrating life. Did you see any suggestions on that video that made you kind of go, ooh, I need to work on that one? I was like, oh, I got to call mom when I get home, you know. And hi, mom, she might be watching. But um, yeah, you could go through those lists, and if you're not careful, you could get guilty, guilt tripped, and that's not good. That's sucking the quality out of your life. You don't want to, life isn't about a guilt trip. But it's good to learn things to help us celebrate. And that's why I wanted to do this series. We're going to have, uh, we're going to talk about other things, gifts from God uh, that come from this, not from this, that give us eternal reason to celebrate. And we're going to have a party, those who can be here on the 16th, 
and we're going to have displays of our different ministries that are going on around here. I'm hearing some great ideas from people, and we're not worried about being high church. Too late for that, right? We're not worried about being fancy. We just want to show how different people are coming together using their gifts. You know why? We're going to have a Christmas potluck here and we're going to celebrate after our second service those gifts because those gifts are our gifts back to God. And it's been an awesome year. We went to double services this year. Remember going, I wonder if it'll work. I wonder if it'll work. You know what? It did. We have two great services again today. I, I'm blown away every week. They came back. And, uh, and God is blessing us in other ways than that. And I wanted to just encourage us to celebrate this time of the year as we, we think, come to the end of the year and get ready for a new year. Today, though, it's about, number one, remembering it's, that life is a gift. If you're going to celebrate life, you've got to remember that life is a gift. See, there's a, there's a challenge that we have. We can get where we feel like we're kind of entitled. And we live in a culture that's been so blessed that sometimes people make a bigger deal out of this stuff and then they advertise, you know, focused on me, you deserve a break today. So go out, get away, have it your way, you know. And we, we keep seeing the advertising that focuses on me and I can get to thinking it's me. Now the problem with that is sometimes life in the world sucks. And if I'm expecting everything to always be great because I'm so awesome, I'm going to be disappointed. There's got to be something deeper to it. And the fact is, that life is a gift. Bill Gates gave a speech recently to a high school, and he talked about 11 things that they did not or would not learn in school. He talks about feel-good, politically correct teachings created a generation of kids with no concept of reality and how this concept set them up for failure in the real world. Here's those rules. Rule number one, life is not fair. Get used to it. Rule number two, the world won't care about your self-esteem. The world will expect you to accomplish something before you feel good about yourself. Rule number three, you will not make $60,000 right out of high school. You won't be a vice president with a car phone until you earn both. Rule number four, if you think your teacher is tough, wait till you get a boss. Rule number five, flipping burgers is not beneath your dignity. Your grandparents had a different word for burger flipping. They called it opportunity. Rule number six, if you mess up, it's not your parents' fault, so don't whine about your mistakes. Learn from them. Rule number seven from Bill Gates, he said, before you were born, your parents weren't as boring as they are now. <laughs> they got that way from paying your bills, changing your clothes, and listen to you talk about how cool you thought you were. So before you save the rainforest from the parasites of your parents' generation, try delousing the closet in your own bedroom. Rule number eight, your school may have done away with winners and losers, but life has not. In some schools, they have abolished failing grades, and then they'll give you as many times as you want to get the right answer. This doesn't bear the slightest resemblance in anything in real life. Number nine, life is not divided into semesters. You don't get summers off, and very few employers are interested in helping you find yourself. Do that on your own time. Number 10, television is not real life. In real life, people actually have to leave the coffee shop and go to work. And rule 11, be nice to nerds. Chances are you'll end up working for one. Well, there is books and things being written about this younger generation come up just like every generation people study them and look at things and one of the things they say about people growing up now is that they feel entitled i should have the best iphone i should have the best game i should have the best video game and there's this entitled spirit and that's disappointing because as you grow up things don't go like you always want has anybody noticed that so to combat that we need to realize life is a gift and learn to suck the juice out of it while we have it. In Genesis 2, 7, it says, Then the Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. The Bible uses breath to, to compare to life. And if you think about it, breath is pretty important. 
I know some of us need to work on our breath, but that's not what I'm talking about. But breath, breathing. And if you've ever having trouble with your breathing, you know how important it is. In fact, right now, just hold your breath for a minute. You can only do it so long, right? If we hold our breath too long, if we had the ability to do it, we would die. Because we have to breathe to live. And it is God who gave us life. And what I have is a gift. Some of my, I love some of the people in our church that I get to be in with my small group. And sometimes I'll say, how you doing? And they say, every day above ground's a good day. You know, there's a wisdom with older people. And I don't think it's because they're paranoid. paranoid. I think it's because they're smart. Because they realize life is so fast. And the truth is, sometimes God takes younger people or things of the world cause them to go. And the Lord uh, brings, no one is promised how uh, so many days amen we, we we don't know so we have this gift and we should spend so much time uh, looking at the past or worried about the future all we have is the present it's a gift that's why it's called the present we have it right now number two to celebrate life i've got to, I, I need to understand that life is best celebrated with god in the center of my life see i grew up thinking well i know it's a good thing to have god in my life but I want to have fun too, and I don't know that I can have fun with this Christian thing. And so I kind of got this concept, well, I'm going to really do the fun thing in the life, and then hopefully I'll get my act together before I die so I can go to heaven. See, I had this concept that I couldn't have fun. And what I found is some of these things that the world offers that this, in these nice wrappings isn't as fun as they thought they were. You ever, you ever buy a present for your kid, and they're so excited, and it's so fun, and I do love that. But after a while, what happens to those presents? They're cast aside or they're broken or whatever. And the only thing about kids is we just have a different years in our age. But kids are kids. And our toys may get more expensive, but we still struggle with that battle thinking it's about this stuff. And, uh, and God right here gave us something so much greater with the birth of the baby that came in the miracle birth. He came to give us something. And so we're not going to have a bummer life. I was so excited when I came back, started studying the Bible and got into the church and started trying to become a follower of Jesus. I was blown away to realize it's actually fun. We actually have fun here. We love each other. We have relationships. We're a family. It's fun in the, in the kingdom of God. And, and we can celebrate life with God in the middle. Moses was giving a talk to the children of Israel. They're going into the promised land. And, you know, when people are giving their last words, it's important. And he's saying in the book of Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy is like a sermon, the whole book. And he says this to him. I have it on your outline, Deuteronomy 30, 19, 20. He says, for the Lord, what? Is your life. Is your life. And he will give you many years in the land. He swore to give your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He says the Lord is your life. So it doesn't make sense for me to try to stick it on the side. And Hollywood will make fun of you as Christians, and the world will make fun of you. Friends or family sometimes that don't believe are going to make fun of you, and they think your life is a bummer. And, and, and there's even in some Christian places, you can go to certain churches. I don't want to be cruel or judgmental because I'm a sinner saved by grace, but, but there's some places you can go where you've you got to be real serious, and, and, and it's almost like real scary and uptight. But don't worry, someday we get to go to heaven if we're lucky. You know, you and I are the only ones going to heaven, but I'm not sure about you. You know what I mean? And there's this par spiritual paranoia. But I want you to see what Jesus said in John 10.10. 10. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. See, that's Satan. Satan wants to steal and kill and destroy. Sometimes people hurt you and you think you project it on the people. That's what, normal for us to do that. But there's really a power, an unseen being, an unseen power behind us that wants, he'll lie to us to try to entice us. But the fact is, he wants to steal your life from you. He wants to kill. He wants to destroy your life. But now look what Jesus says. I came that they may, what? Go to church. Oh, wait, no, no, no. I came so that they would have a whole lot of money in the bank. No, no. Some are going, oh, I, I came that you may um, be well liked by everybody and, and be a people pleaser and, and live to keep everybody. No, I came that you may be paranoid and scared to death, but someday, don't worry, you get to go to heaven. No, he says, I came that they may have life and have it to the full. I put here the Amplified Bible. I saw a preacher on TV. He called the Amplified Bible the girl's Bible. He says it's because it has more words. 
He said that, ladies. I didn't say that. But I like what the Amplified Bible says on this same verse from John 10.10. 10. The thief comes only in order to steal and kill and destroy. I have came that they may have and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. I love that because in the original Greek, that's really the idea. It's overflowing life. Some words for associated with that Greek word are super, super life, abundant life, life to the full. It's overflowing. God didn't come so you would have a bummer life. He wants you to enjoy your life. Now, this just gets better because point number three, in Christ, we get a new life and are continually renewed. That's what the Bible teaches. We not only get a new life, we get a do-over. You don't get do-overs a lot of times in the world. They're cooked. You, your record's bad. You blow it. Your image is tarnished. There's no hope. You're done in an organization or a job or with some people. Some human beings won't forgive you. With God, you get a do-over. It starts when we become believers. John 1, 12 talks about, actually the previous verse talks about in him, talking about Christ, was light. And the light was the light of man. And he came into the darkness, and the darkness rejected him. It did not apprehend, it didn't understand who he was. But then it says this, I have it on your outline, verse 12. Yet to, how many? All, All who did receive it. See, sometimes I want to stop there. Sometimes we think only certain ones. Uh, can do this, I don't know that I'm good enough. I don't think I make the grade. We grew up getting picked to play on a team or, you know, we, we, we didn't know if we made the grade. The Bible says that to all who did receive him, to those who believe in his name, he gave the right to become what? Churchgoers. Religious wackos. People who dress a certain way or have funny haircuts. Or when they say God, they say God. They can't just say God. No, he gave them the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, not physical birth, not of human decision or husband's will, something that man does, but born of God. You know, that means you, if you're a believer in Jesus and you started following, you've received him as your Lord, your Savior. You, you wear the name of Christ. You were going your way. And then you realize you're not the center of the universe and you made the, the center of the universe who really is Jesus. Paul says in Colossians that he holds all things together. God, Jesus is the gravity of the universe. You made him the center of your life and became a follower. Christ, Christian just means Christ one. You're not perfect. You're forgiven. And you're following him and you became a son or a daughter of God. I realize that sometimes Paul will write about the whole creation as if his offspring are children of God in that God is the Father in heaven that created all. But there's another sense that he writes and the Bible writes like here that you, when you become a believer, God says, you are my son, you are my daughter. Listen, don't mess with God's kids. God loves his kids. And you are born again when you become this believer. Jesus said to Nicodemus, in John 3 3 Jesus replied very truly I tell you no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again he, he said this because Nicodemus was wondering is this the Messiah can he be the one he didn't even say it out loud he's like boy you must be a teacher come from God for no one does the things that you do and right about there Stan would have said oh thanks Nick which one of my sermons did you hear you know taking this compliment but Jesus always he goes deeper he knows what he's after he knows this teacher in Israel is wondering are you the one that's going to usher in the kingdom that Daniel wrote about and that the, uh, the Isaiah wrote about. And Jesus says, you know, let's just cut to the chase. You want to see the kingdom of God? You've got to be born again. A little bit later, he talks about being born of water and of spirit. If anyone ever asks you, if you're a Christian, if you're a born-again Christian, you say to them, that's the only kind there is. Everyone who uh, becomes a believer is born again. No matter what happened in your past, if you become a believer in Christ and you trust in him and what he did at the cross, you become his son or daughter and you are born again. Now this gets better. 1 John 5, 13, at a time there was some spiritual elitists who thought you had to have special knowledge to really know God. 
uh, and they were causing problems in the church. You know, they were kind of know-it-alls. And we don't know about some of you common folks who don't have deep understanding about whether you're really right with God or not. And listen to what John writes to them, 1 John 5, 13. I write these things to you who what? You who could quote the whole Bible? Oh, wait, no, that's not what it says. That fact, it was being written then. <laughs> they were part of the Bible the New Testament. He says, I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may kind of wonder if perchance, possibly, oh, I can eke in there maybe. No, I write these things to those of you who believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know you have, present tense. You don't have to go around, oh, I want to go to church because I want to go to hell. I want to be nice to people because I don't want to go to hell. I better feed the hungry because I don't want to go to hell. Oh, and, and I'm just, I hope I can do this. No, we do good things because they're good out of, a, out of thankfulness to God because we're saved because of him, because we know him and we have a relationship with him. And you need to know that you know. You need to settle that right now. If you're still living on that ledger with God, I'm lost, saved, lost, saved, lost, saved. Today's the day to settle it because that's a part of you being able to celebrate every day of your life and every second of your life is knowing that you know and you can know that you know and you have it. It's not something just in the future. Yeah, there's a sense that time will stop and we will spill off. We're going to go. Every one of us is going to one day leave this place and it's kind of like going through a trap door and on the other uh, side of that door there's going to be the arms of Jesus welcoming us to be with him forever and ever and time will be no more and pain will be no more. There will be no more crying. There will be no more tears. But he says right here, you have. So there's a sense in that it's also qualitative. Right now, if God is your father and Jesus is your savior, your older brother, you have, you're a part of eternal life. You have life that is abundant and keeps flowing. Is that good news? Amen. Is that worth being cel celebrated? It gets better. Check this out. Paul says in 2 Corinthians 4, 16, therefore, we do not, what? We do not lose heart. We're not like those whiners, complainers who give up. We're all human, and if you get worried or tempted to be worried, you're human. Don't beat yourself up. But God doesn't want us to lose heart. He says, we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away. That's not the good part of the verse. Yet inwardly we are be being, what's that? Renewed. Renewed day by day. So you get a do-over when you become a believer and you are made new. No matter what you've done, it's washed clean, you are forgiven, and you need to trust in what he did. God's the only God, different than Buddha or anyone else in history. He is the only God that says, I want you to believe in what I've done, rather than I want you to do something, and then I'll forgive you, or then you'll find this nirvana. Then if you can get good enough, then you're gonna get there. No, he's the only God in history, the one true God, I believe, who says, I want you to, believe in what I've done. And then you get life. And this life is actually renewed. The exciting part is not that, in, that outwardly we're decaying. That's not an exciting part, that outwardly. See, the, this here tells you it's about youth. It's about you can't have a flaw. You can't age. You can't have a wrinkle. Get something new. Get something new. This, the spirit that comes from this, says you are made new over and over and over. The outward, this says it's all about the outward. This says, ah, that's just the shell. And someday the shell's going to be tired, but there's a spirit that goes on and on. I know we don't want to get in our small groups and say, hey, let's discuss how we're, how we're all decaying. You know, how's your decaying coming along? Well, you know, I keep growing these things, these love handles on the side. They're getting bigger and bigger. And I just feel myself kind of giving in to gravity. And, and I, I make noises I never used to make, like when I tie my shoes. I'm, I'm finding hair. I had no idea you could grow hair there. And uh, my wife's always picking it off the top of my nose. I can't see it because I'm decaying in my eyes. I can't even see it. it it's just not an exciting topic. But the good news part is he says inwardly, this is something to be pumped up about. We have found the proverbial fountain of youth. We get better and better. We get newer and newer day by day by day by day. So I say celebrate. In Christ, we get a new life and we're continually renewed. You know, in the microscopical city of Whoville, everyone celebrated Christmas with much happiness enjoy with the exception of the cynical, grouchy creature called the Grinch. 
The Grinch despised Christmas and the Who's of Whoville with great wrath, and occasionally he would pull dangerous and harmful practical jokes on them. As a result, as you can imagine, no one in Whoville likes the Grinch, except Cindy Lou. Cindy Lou Who is an eight-year-old girl who believes that everyone is missing the point about Christmas. And after becoming aware of the Grinch's existence, because everyone in Whoville learns about the Grinch's existence, she begins to study his background, and she finds out that he was abused, he was made fun of, and he had a rough growing up, and that was a part of him becoming this Grinch. Now, the Grinch deduces that the Who's only celebrate Christmas because of their extravagant gifts, and he decides to steal all their belongings while they're asleep. Creating a Santa suit and a sleigh, the Grinch's burglary is successful. He gets all of the presents in Whoville, and the Who's discover the Grinch's scheme, and Augustus, the leader, takes the opportunity to denounce Cindy Lou, who, who was trying to believe in the, the, the Grinch, and now this catastrophe has happened. However, her father, Lou, Lou, who, <laughs> he reminds everyone that they still have the Christmas spirit. They still have the best part of Christmas, that the principal meaning of Christmas is to spend times with family and friends and not about giving or receiving gifts and putting up decorations. The people accept his speech and they begin to sing. Now up on the hill, the Grinch is so excited that his plots to destroy all their gifts worked and he can't wait to hear the Who's crying. But instead, he hears singing. And it blows his mind. And his little tiny shrunken heart actually grows three times its original size. He changes. He's new. And then he realizes I've got all these toys. But they're on a sleigh. And they begin to go off a cliff. And he's like, oh no, what am I going to do? And he's about to give up. But somebody shows up. Let's check this out. <laughs> Oh no, the sleigh, the pressure, they'll be destroyed. And I care! What is the deal? Wait! This can't happen. It shouldn't, it couldn't, it mustn't, it wouldn't. Not now, not then, not ever again. <laughs>
Nobody should be alone on Christmas. Isn't that a great part when she says that and the look on his face? And, you know, that's one of the things I'm excited about, Hope, is that as we've grown, we continue to provide more opportunities. And we have something going on where everybody can go to something. I don't believe everybody should go to everything, but I think there should be something for everybody. And, um, but here it gets even better. In Christ, you never really are alone. You have someone in you who loves you, who understands you more than any human being can ever understand you. And he loves you, wants you to have an abundant life, and he wants you to enjoy life, a life of quality. I love the principles from that story because everybody else gave up on the Grinch, but not Sandy Lou. Don't ever give up on anyone, including yourself. I love it because it says Christmas is not just about material gifts. It's about the spirit of, of Christmas. And anyone can choose life. Did you know that? Anyone can decide right now to live. I mean really live. Some people die before they die. You can live and really live right now. It's a choice. If you look at the last, uh, second to last verse, Deuteronomy, same speech from Moses. He says, I've set before you life and death, the blessing and the curse. So choose life in order that you may live, you and your descendants. I don't believe he's just talking about choose physical life. They're already alive. I think he's talking about qualitatively. Choose to live and really live with God in the center of it. There was a professor who had some of his former students visiting, and he noticed that as the alumni began to visit with each other, they all started complaining. They complained about the stress in their life, the challenges in their family, the responsibilities, the cost of everything. And he says, I want to offer you guys some coffee. And he makes this big pot of coffee. And then he sets out all these cups. And some are really uh, expensive. Some are really beautiful. There's glass. There's crystal. There's plastic. There's porcelain. There's, there's cheap. There's all this expensive. He says, guys, help yourself to a cup and pour yourself some coffee. And he says, after they all got their coffee, I noticed that you all picked the best cups that we had available. And he says that you would choose only the best for yourself is not a problem, but that can be the source of your stress when you're always trying to get what is perceived to be the best for yourself. And you, be, you can begin to think that the outside, the container, is more important than the life, the inside. He says the coffee is like life. It's what's inside that counts. It's not the container. We have jobs. We have money. We have uh, careers. We have things uh, that, that are tools to helping to contain life, but they're not life. They're temporary. So make the most out of everything. Live simply. Love, love generously. Care deeply. Speak kindly. You know, uh, when I was growing up, I did some real embarrassing things. Well, I still do. But, and I share them sometimes in my sermons, and I don't know that I'm going to do. I shared one the first service. wasn't on my notes. But there was a time I was at a friend's at a college party. I thought it was so cool to be at this party in San Luis and uh, all these college kids and everything. And I stayed at the dorm of a friend's because I went to play ball at a college in another town. And we got wasted and partied. I went to sleep, and I woke up, and I had peed my pants. My wife is going, oh, he's telling that one again. But uh, she's watching on feed right now, I think. You guys helped me out. But uh, anyway, uh, I remember being so embarrassed. Because, see, I was cool. I was homecoming king. Not queen, but king. I was uh, popular. You know, I was most inspirational in several sports. Everybody liked And I peed my pants. And I had to sneak out of there. My friend knew it was up. He's all a loving guy. We're still good buddies, thank God. And he said, hey, don't worry about it. And I went home. You know, I think about that sometimes. Because all through life, sometimes things like that happen. I still pee my pants in other ways. You see, when we think we got to be cool all the time, or we got to have a certain net worth all the time, or we can't make any mistakes all the time, we're setting ourselves up for a life that sucks. But the thing that's cool is, if you trust in Christ, and you realize life is a gift, and that you get a new life, and that it gets newer and newer and newer, you can choose every day to celebrate life. And you don't have to give a flip of what anybody thinks. They're going to wonder what you're up to sometimes. You can dance like nobody's there, even when they are there, or sing like nobody's listening. You know, you can just enjoy life all the time. 
There are times, so many times, I could have been killed. I should have been dead. And, and when I start having a pity party about something not going the way I want, or worrying about, gee, I'm getting older, or what if this happens, or what if that happens, or worry about these things, I think about what God has blessed me with, and I just want to yell out, I'm alive! I'm alive! I'm alive! I don't want to die before I die. I'd rather burn out than fade away, man. I want to live it. I want to live it to the max, and I don't care if, if you like that or not. I love you, and I want you to like it, but I want you more to live what God wants you to live, and I want you to suck the juice out of life. I want you to squeeze every ounce out of it and live life to the full. Amen? Amen. Now, look at this last verse. Now, this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. He doesn't say this is eternal life if you can pass a certain test. This is eternal life, church, having religion, having the right sign outside or the right denomination or being popular and whatever. This is eternal life. It's a relationship. It's knowing God. God wants more than a religion. He, want, he loves you, and he wants you to know him, and he wants you to know him. And the more you get to know him, the more you're going to go, wow, this is too good to be true. Grace is massive. It's an ocean. I can't believe I have this life. We're duped when we think it's all about this. Folks, this will rust. People can steal it. It will wear out. This may not look all fancy, but the baby grew up, and he died on a cross and he rose from the grave, and he is our Savior. And you and I in Christ, we are strong, not because of our flesh, because of our Savior. And we have hope, not because of who we are, but because of our Savior. We can live without fear because of our Savior. We can celebrate every day because of our Savior. Amen? Amen. Let's pray together. And as you're praying, if you're new to that, you can pray in your heart for God to make himself known to you. If you're new as a believer, you can put your faith and receive him as your Lord and Savior and become a follower. And I believe God will help you, and he'll make himself known to you. Those of you that are already believers, you can pray with me. Father, we thank you for the gift of life. Help us to remember that in a world that uh, tries to act like they're going to live forever or or makes cheaper things more attractive. Help us to remember just the life. Like Jesus said, it's not the clothing, but we have a body, we have a spirit, we have a life, and it's not stuff. And Lord, we thank you for this gift. And Father, we celebrate it with you in the center. Lord, please be the center of our life, every one of us as disciples of Christ. And Father, thank you for giving us a new life. We made mistakes and we fell short and we still do but you make us new in Jesus. We get a do-over. We get to start over and over, brand new. And so we choose life today. We make a commitment in our heart to choose to live life to the full because of our Savior, through whom we pray, amen. Let's stand together and worship God.
Now it's time to pray for our offering. Woo yes, let's pray. As you bow, I know that some of us may be going through hard times, and maybe you're not prospering financially right now, and God does not want you to go out of here guilty or feel manipulated in, in any way. He wants your heart, and all the other stuff follows in his time. But for those of us who are prosper or members of Hope, um, um, Father, we give joyfully and cheerfully because we know it's all yours anyway, and we're not taking anything with us. And it's a form of our worship. God, make us grow and to be a force of hope on the ridge and beyond until Jesus comes so that we can be a blessing. In, in his name we pray, amen. amen. Hey, before we give, what is our purpose? Amen. So remember till next week, in Christ we always have hope. See you next week. have a great week. Be safe out there.